What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is an exciting day because we've got something truly special to unbox and review. Now as a social media content creator, I'm always on the lookout for additional storage space and hardware, especially because my content file sizes just keep getting larger and larger. Well, today we're gonna address that because we're gonna be taking a look at this professional external hard drive enclosure from Yoda Master. Now, this isn't the first product that I've reviewed from them on this channel, and hopefully with your continued support, it won't be the last. The docking station that they sent me previously was an amazing piece of hardware, and I'm hoping that this external enclosure will be the same. If you wanna check out my previous video, I'll link it in the card above. So as usual, we're going to deep dive into this sleek and what I think is a powerful beast of an enclosure. But before we get started, let's unbox this thing to see what we get. So as you can see, the box is pretty professional looking and on the back of it, they do list out all the different versions of external enclosures that they do have. This one is the model PS400RU3, which is their USB 3.0 version of enclosure. Now I did ask if I could test out their type C enclosure, but they didn't have any more available, which I guess means that they're flying off the shelf like hotcakes. Anyways, as you can see from the front of the box, at least it is a nice looking contemporary design when it comes to an enclosure and it is made of aluminum alloy, which is nice. So again, this is a USB 3.0 and has some type C connectors to it. So this particular model is a four bay external hard drive enclosure that's made of aluminum alloy and it has the dimensions of 136 by 252 by 137.5. And again, it does support RAID 0, 1, 3, 5, 10 and does support 2.5 and 3.5 inch SATA hard drives and solid state drives. Uh, it also supports pretty much every single operating system there is. Now, in addition to that, again, this is the USB 3.0 version that supports up to a five gigabits per second transfer rate. And it also does have a type C interface to support up to 10 gigabits of transfer rate. So that's also pretty nice. And it also supports hot swappable plug and play devices such as mice, keyboard, and other accessories. And also because it is made of aluminum alloy, it should dissipate heat pretty well. Okay, so what's in the box? So you do get the four bay external hard drive enclosure. You also get one USB cable, you get a set of screws, you get your power adapter, a screwdriver, and then a user manual. So let's go ahead and unbox this to see what's inside. Okay, so first things first, this little box looks like the accessory box. So you get your USB 3.0 cable, you get your power brick, and then the power adapter, the power cord. You get a pretty nice looking screwdriver. Uh, looks like you can, it spins within, in your hand, which is always nice. And then you get a bunch of tiny screws and these look like they're for the hard drives themselves. Okay, uh, and then you also get their social media and contact card and a thank you card at, at that. And then you get your user manual, which also serves as an instruction guide and information packet. Okay, and then next is the enclosure itself. All right, so it is protected by styrofoam, which just keeps it from juggling around while it's in shipping. And right off the bat, it feels like solid stainless steel. It just feels like a brick of metal. In fact, what it reminds me of is those steel beams that they use to build buildings. It just feels like a solid piece of thick iron metal, but it actually is just stainless steel. But overall, it's just a square block that you know looks pretty solid and durable. So what I'm noticing is there are vent holes in the front as well in the back. So not only can you dissipate heat through the frame itself, but there are holes in both the front and back where the heat will dissipate through. And then what I also noticed by accident is that if you press the front, it releases the front door, which is the entire front panel to expose the hard drive enclosures themselves, which I think allows you to remove the trays as well. 
Yeah, so you can remove the trays to the front. Now the trays themselves are made of plastic um, and so are the guide rails for the trays. So I'd say everything on the inside is made of plastic, whereas everything on the outside, at least the important and critical parts, is made of stainless steel. Okay, and then I guess the, the trays themselves just slide right back in very easily. Okay, so first things first, there's not much to this enclosure. Um, it's pretty much just a solid block of metal. Uh, on the back there are a few ports, so there's your power button, there's your DC connector for the power, you've got your USB 3.0 plug, and then you've got a reset button, and then you've got a bunch of little dip switches which allow you to set the RAID type you want to configure for the external closure itself. Which is, I guess, something that's new to me, um, because typically I usually choose the RAID through the software, but I guess there's a hardware control for the RAID types instead on this device. So according to the instructions and the diagram on the enclosure itself, you do use these little dip switches in order to configure the specific RAID you want to use for the enclosure itself. Now after reading the instructions, this external enclosure is shipped and configured to operate in normal mode, which means that each of the hard drives when installed is gonna operate as an individual hard drive rather than set up for RAID. Now if you decide you want to change that configuration and you hot swap the hard drives, it will interrupt the operation of the other hard drives. So you need to be sure how you're setting this up before you actually do set it up. And then like most hot swappable devices, you're going to want to make sure that you stop the service of that hard drive or that device in the task manager before you actually swap any drives out. Now overall, the enclosure itself looks like an elegant fortress for your precious hard drives. And judging by what I'm holding in my hands, it truly does have a sturdy aluminum shell that screams premium quality. In fact, the design is so sleek and modern that you could display this on your desk and be the envy of all your techie friends. Now let's quickly talk about the standout features. One of the main attractions of this enclosure, of course, is its compatibility. It's designed to support both 2.5 inch and 3.5 inch SATA hard drives. In fact, it's like a transformer that adapts to your needs. Now again, to access and open this external enclosure, all you have to do is press on the front, which should open up the front panel, which should allow you to access the trays and the internal hard drives inside the device. The door itself is made up of this thin aluminum material, which should allow for airflow to flow into the device as well as dissipate heat outwards. Now, from a support perspective, there are four trays inside this device because you can accommodate four hard drives, whether they're 3.5 or 2.5 inch hard drives. Now the trays themselves are made of plastic, but they can accommodate a full size 3.5 inch hard drive, SATA hard drive, or even a 2.5 inch SATA hard drive. Now once you install those hard drives, it's simply a matter of sliding those trays back in. And they should connect to the connectors in the back on the board itself. And once all the drives are back in and installed, you'll need to decide which RAID configuration, if any, you want to use, and then make the proper adjustments on the back using the switches. Now by default, again, this is set to normal operation mode, so each of the hard drives will show up as individual devices within your computer and device manager. So you'll show four new hard drives once this is turned on and connected to your PC. Now because this model of Yoda Master's external enclosure supports all RAID configurations, you might be asking yourself which RAID, if any, should you configure for this? Well in all honesty, that would depend on your needs, your usage, and your preferences. Now RAID 0 is good if you want to combine all of your hard drives into a single storage device and maximize the available storage that you've got available to you when all that space is combined. RAID 1 is good from a backup and redundancy perspective if you're worried about losing your data, but at the expense of losing half of the available storage space between the four drives. Now that's because this configuration will use two of your hard drives to mirror the other two, 
of your available hard drives for storage. Now when it comes to RAID 3, that's typically not a configuration that I would use or recommend because for my needs, it's not optimal at all. For me, RAID 5 is my go-to configuration because it provides a combination of data security and redundancy if a hard drive should fail. And it also maximizes the utilization of capacity by distributing your data across all four of the hard drives. Now a good example of that configuration is in the instance that one of your hard drives fails. The RAID array can actually still operate and rebuild your data using the data across the remaining three drives. Now RAID 5 evenly balances reads and writes and data security. It also has more usable storage than RAID 1 and provides performance equivalent to that of RAID 0, which is why I typically choose this configuration. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and configure this enclosure and see how hard or easy it is to set up. Now for the purpose of this video, I had initially planned on starting with normal mode since I only had one single 2.5 inch SSD with me. But I decided to wait and I ordered four additional SSDs so that I could do the RAID 5 configuration and see how easy that was to set up. So today we're going to take these four one terabyte SSD hard drives and install them in this enclosure and see how hard or how easy the setup is and then we'll go from there. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and take out the drive trays for this enclosure so we can set up the hard drives. So there's one, two, three, and four. Okay, we'll just close this. Then we'll take out the hard drives. So when it comes to space, I know these one terabyte hard drives aren't that much when it comes to space, but I just wanted to test this out. And if it does work well, then I'll upgrade these hard drives a little bit later. Plus these were pretty affordable currently. And because I already have a NAS with a bunch of 16 terabyte hard drives, I'm going to try these one terabytes for my desktop configuration, which this thing I am going to connect directly to my PC itself for a desktop storage device. Okay, so now because these are the smaller SSDs, you're gonna mount these to the back half of the tray themselves, and then you're gonna secure them using the screws on the bottom. So we'll do that now, at least for one. We'll do these one by one. So I think there are different screw sizes. So I think these are the thinner ones and those are the thicker ones for the larger hard drives. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're using the right screws definitely for this. Yeah, so these go in a lot easier. So again, if you're screwing them in the bottom for the larger, larger drives, you're gonna to wanna to use these thicker screws. And if you're using the smaller SSDs where you're screwing it into the bottom, you're gonna to wanna to use these thinner screws. So there are a difference. I thought they were just giving you a bunch of screws for extra, but there is a purpose for all these different screws in two different bags. Okay, so there's one tray. Time for the last hard drive. Okay, so now all the hard drives are installed in the enclosure themselves and they're pretty snug and fit perfectly. Okay, so now that we've got all the hard drives set up on the trays themselves, we're gonna just put them into the uh, enclosure itself and all you have to do for that is pop open the enclosure and slide them in. So you just slide it in and you should be able to push it into the connectors themselves at the back of the device. We'll just do this one by one until they're all installed. And th what's nice about this is there is a good amount of spacing between each hard drive so that airflow can go through the system and keep the hard drives cool. Now it's all about lining the tracks up to the trays themselves and then just dropping it in. And they really do just go in very easily. 
So there you go, all the hard drives are now installed. And once that's done, you just need to close the front lid and lock it in place. Now, next thing, because I am a fan of RAID 5, is to configure the dip switches on the back so that it's set to RAID 5. I'm going to follow the instruction book because the little diagram on the back is a little small for me. Okay, so RAID 5, two, the second dip switch is down. So that should configure it to RAID 5. Okay, so now that this is set up to RAID 5, and then the next step is to plug this thing into some power and then connect this using the USB port on the back to my PC. And then there's some configuration we have to do in order to make sure that this is seen as a RAID 5 device and actually seen on the computer itself. Okay, so first things first, let's take out this uh, USB cable. And it is a short USB cable, so you're gonna wanna put it next to your PC um, or whatever device you're connecting it to. Now the good thing about my setup is that I have a NAS that I can plug this into via USB so I can use this as a secondary storage for my NAS drive. Now it will make this network accessible which is nice but for now I'm probably just going to use this and connect it to my PC as a local hard drive. Okay so you're going to take this large end of the USB 3 cable and plug it into the back of the device itself. And then you're going to take the USB-A side and plug it into your PC. Uh, you're also going to want to plug it into power. And it should only fit one way. And then we'll just take this protective cap on. And then we'll plug this into a power port. Now I'm probably not going to plug this into my PC PC, but I'm going to plug it into my new MacBook Air because I do a lot of video editing on my MacBook Air and because I did order only a minimum amount of hard drive for that, hard drive space for that, I can definitely use this as a faster and better method of storage for my files while I'm doing the editing. Okay, so change of plans. Uh, now I remember why I asked for the USB-C version because the MacBook Air does not have USB-A. So I won't be plugging this into my MacBook Air because I don't have the adapter for it. Uh, instead, I will plug it into my PC and we'll go from there. Now what it does say is that you do have to press the set button and then power the thing on in order to set this up as uh, RAID 5 or whatever you decide you want the configuration to be because by default it's already set to normal mode so you have to reset it to the RAID 5 mode. So the way you do that is we need a pin. So we all knew these 3D printing accessories will come in handy. So you just press, stick a pin into the set button and then you power it on. And it should automatically reset this to the new RAID configuration that you have set up. So we'll see if that actually works when I plug it into my PC. Okay, so my desk is a little bit messy right now but the hard drive is on because you can see a little bit of the blue light in there. So you will see that all of these lights are on. So now I'm just going to plug this in after I get to the software. So you're going to want to bring up your disk management software on your PC uh, just so you can see if this is added or not. But your next, after that's done and you've also reset the RAID settings, you're going to go ahead and plug it into your PC and it should automatically show up in your disk management. So as you can see, it shows up here as a hard drive with uh, two gigs of space. That's a little weird. Okay, so once you've installed the hard drive trays, plugged it in, and reset the RAID, you're going to want to open your disk management software or the disk management on your PC so you can see when this hard drive is added. Um, and then once that's done, you're going to want to plug this into your PC using the USB 3 cable. And as soon as you do that, you'll see disk four or whatever disk you have available is going to show up 
with three terabytes of hard drive space available. Now again, it's only three terabytes because some of that space is being used to back up the information. So you've got unallocated space here, which you're then going to act activate or initialize. And click OK. And then once it's activated, you're going to create a striped volume. Okay, and once you've initialized the disk, we're going to just create a simple volume using all of the space we have available. And we'll assign it, let's call it the, that's a good one, we'll call it the K drive. Click next. Uh, we'll make it an NTFS volume. We'll call this Yoda Master. Uh, we'll just change that to a lowercase m. And then we'll do a per quick format and just click finished. Now once that's done, once it's done installing, you'll see here that Yoda Master shows up in your um, PC folder where all your hard drives are and you've got access to all three about three terabytes of uh, hard drive space so there you go that is the installation so because this is plugged in through USB 3 we are going to test how fast this can go so let's see how fast the transfer speeds are so I have got one of my 4k videos here that I'm about to post. And this is my Creality Laser Engraver 4K file. Oh, wrong one. Okay, and this is my Creality 4K Laser Engraver file that I just finished editing. And we're gonna transfer it over. So as you can see, the speed is currently at 76.8 megs per second, which is fairly fast for a pretty big file. Now I think it will go faster also if I plug it into an actual USB 3.0 port, because right now it's just plugged into a slower port on my PC. So just to test this hard drive out, we're going to copy this file that I edited and then see if we can play 4K video off of it. So as you can see, no issues playing 4K video from the hard drive itself. Okay, so now that the hard drive enclosure is set up, I just wanna share a few tips that I learned along the way. 
The first one being is after you plug in the enclosure itself and are initiating and configuring the drives. If your overall combined storage space is not larger than two terabytes, you want to initiate the drive using the MBR partition style. But then again, I'm not sure why you'd even be using an external hard drive enclosure in the first place in today's world, especially with less than two terabytes of hard drive space. Otherwise, any amount of storage space above two terabytes, you're gonna to wanna to use the GPT style. Now that's because the MBR partition style will only allow you two terabytes of maximum storage. The rest will either be unused or you'll have to create another partition. Now the second tip, of course, is to make sure that you set the RAID configuration before you plug in the external enclosure into your PC. Especially if you're gonna switch your existing RAID configuration to a different configuration. Now other than that, as you can see in the video, setup was fairly easy. If you're looking for faster transfer speeds, then I'd definitely get the PS400 C3 or the PS400 RC3 models, which have the USB-C connection, which I hope I'll get to test out in a future video. As for this PS400 RU3 model, I've been using it for a few days now and the enclosure is fantastic. It is super quiet and it stays extremely cool. Sometimes you hardly even notice it's there. And overall, the transfer speeds are not that bad at all, especially for an enclosure that costs only $125 on Amazon. Now you will have to order your own hard drives, so that will definitely increase the cost. But overall, I think for the enclosure itself, it's well worth the price. Anyways, if you are interested in buying one of these for yourself, I will leave a link to it in the description section below. In addition to that, I'll also leave a link to the other models in case you want to purchase or try those out as well. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you've got one of these external enclosures from Yoda Master, please let me know what you think of them in the comments section below. And on your way out, please make sure that you smash that like button and subscribe. And also ring that bell icon in case Yoda Master sends me their other enclosures to review so that you can also get notified when I post those or other new content. Until next time, See ya.